Welcome to Backwards. I'm Dr. Dan Francis. Pleasure to have you with us tonight. Um, we are uh, filming out of Plymouth Yoga in Plymouth, and I am so excited today. I have been waiting for this interview for a long time. We have with us Elise Cantrell. She is the author of this book, 40 Days to Enlightened Eating. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, again, the, the goal of Backwards is to try to educate patients <coughs> and the public about how you can help your own health and well-being. And I don't think there's a better way to do it than mm -hmm. diet. It's first and yes. foremost. And uh, uh, so Elise has this book, and it is just phenomenal. I, I'm halfway through, and uh, we're going to talk about it and nutrition. And so welcome to our show. Well, thank you. I'm this, honored to be here. This is our first meeting. You know, I've Yay. never had the pleasure of meeting you. Elise, you are from Kohler. I live in Kohler, yes. Okay, so tell me about your journey to... Not only this book, but you're also a yoga instructor, a nutritionist, mom, wife. So tell me about yourself a little bit. Well, my journey to um, healthy eating um, didn't start out so healthy. Um, growing up, I ate Pop-Tarts and um, Frosted Flakes and Tricks and all the kind of cereals like that for breakfast. Came home from school and had Cheetos and Coke for lunch and whatever other kind of junk that there was that kids did back in the 70s. And as I got into my 20s, um, that just did not serve me anymore. I um, began having some health issues. And um, specifically, I ended up having irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. And, um, Which affects a lot of people. Yes, very predominant. And um, I had it so severely. I was just in chronic pain. Um, lost a ton of weight, could not keep weight on, could not keep food in. It would come out one way or the other. And um, very, very deep pain. And the doctors were not, there was no medicines that would help me. Um, I, I was not able to um, find a, a resource to help. And they kind of gave up on me and said, look, um, you're not going to die from this, so you're just going to have to learn to live with it. Live uncomfortably. And I, I knew I, could, I was not going to live that way. So, I, you know, the doctors never tell you, you know, you need to change your diet. You need to change your eating. And because I had been practicing yoga from my early 20s, what I began to look in is to yoga's sister science, Ayurveda. And it's a, a healing science. And it's based on eating and food. That's all over. In and book. and it, the, the book is full of um, Ayurveda. So I ended up using Ayurveda for, and yoga together for my own self-healing. And um, the effects were phenomenal. Um, you know, within maybe six weeks, I felt some better. Within three months, I was significantly better. And then within a full year, I was probably 95% better. And they had told me I was going to have this the rest of my life. So it gave me this great passion for yoga and Ayurveda. It gave me a passion that I have to share it. Um, and that's, that's what the book is about. That's um, why I do this is because it had such a profound effect on me that and, I want to share it. You know, the interesting thing is, is that you talk about a couple weeks three months, half a year, year, We're very geared towards, I want to be better yesterday. And, you know, that's why people go in, they want a pill. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing is, is there's a lot of people who try dietary changes, and they might even do them correctly, but they don't give them enough time. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And one of the principles I used in Ayurveda is it takes about three months to fully rebuild the intestines with food. So my intestines were built with junk food up until that point. And what I did is really mindfully go in and start rebuilding the cells of my intestines with good, wholesome, natural food. And so within three months, my intestines were entirely new intestines. See, people don't understand is that the intestines are actually a modified skin layer. They're skin. It's outside your body all the That's, way through. Oh, I and, didn't know that myself. Yep, yeah, it's, it's outside your body. It's not inside your body until it truly absorbs within the cells. So your gut lining was all messed up. All messed up. And, and that was letting a lot of bugs through, uh, a lot of undigested foods. Through. Absolutely. That, that my, my digestion was just completely thrown off. So. And when you let those, all our cells are always repairing themselves. It's interesting that you stopped at a year but about every year, your whole body turns over all the stuff that makes us up. And I talk about that in the book. I know you do. When I talk <laughs> about awesome. you, you are what you eat. I talk about you know you what we put into our bodies is what we become, 
And um, I found that out firsthand, um, you know, when I rebuilt my intestines. Then I started saying, okay, let's rebuild everything. And now I'm 45 years old and um, I'm pretty happy with how I feel, really? how I look, my skin, my hair, my, you know, my nails, um, all those types of things. I, I, and energy is huge. It's interesting because right now I'm, I'm 46, so we're about the same age. Um, I treated a fellow today who was 50, so four years older than me, and he looked like a real unhealthy 80-year-old. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and you know the, and we'll talk about that more in your book. But that the lack of life in his cells, you know, there's a mm -hmm. grayness, almost a death looking to the skin. Yes. And, um, you can tell that's literally is you are what you eat. In Ayurveda, we are trained um, when when a client comes into me for. Um, uh, come in for a consultation. I, I'm trained to look at their skin. I look at their eyes, their hair, their nails, their tongue, and I can tell so much about their state of health simply by looking at those things. So, is that what you are, you do yoga also? Correct? I do do yoga, you yoga also. I also? teach yoga and um, I practice yoga every single day, and um, I use Ayurveda on myself, on my family, and I have clients come in. Um, and I love mixing yoga and Ayurveda together when I teach. Um, and I always like to bring it to, into my classes because it's just, it's powerful. Well, they go hand in hand. They go hand, they're sister sciences. They're sister sciences. Um, how did you come up with the idea? What motivated you to do a book? Um, you know, I wrote the book that I wish I had had. Oh, that's I wrote the book I wish I had had and did a lot of research. I, um, after healing myself through Ayurveda, I went on and studied Ayurveda, um, got my certification in Ayurveda. I also got my certification in yoga. And what I realized is just the profound impact that happens when you put these sciences together on the health, on the energy, on the metabolism. Um, you know, just over on overall well-being. Where does Ayurveda originate? Where did that originate? Um, that Ayurveda Indiana? originated in India along with yoga right at about the same time. How long ago? 5,000 years, well, 3,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, for sure. There's some, <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, and, and it's one of those tried and true things that is just time tested. And what people um, say to me when they read the book and what I felt when I discovered it was it's so common sense. And it's common sense that we have lost in our society and in our culture. It's not so common anymore. And it's not so common anymore. So it's a really the book and um, the teachings are a return to common sense. In intuition. Intuition. You know, I think we've lost, we've lost that oh. intuition about our own selves. We, we get, I think you get bombarded with uh, so much uh, information and commercials and they tell you that gogurt's a real food although it's shiny I and completely neon. agree and I just get I know. furious it when up, you know <laughs> yes know. and then the, the, the thing I don't like too is that a lot of these people come in and try to attack healthy food saying why they aren't healthy and people get so confused and I just want to clear away the confusion and make it simple and doable for people so your design on this book I think it's ingenious this, oh, this actually could be uh, this book could be a series. That, that's how powerful it is. So it's 40 Days to Enlightened Eating. Tell me about why 40 days. Well, um, a lot of reasons. 40 days, for one, um, in Ayurveda, the mind digests too. The mind digests. And if you feed your mind too much, it can't digest everything. So I really like the principle of one bite-sized day at a time of information. And so I kind of offer one concept a day for somebody to read, absorb, put into practice that day and digest. And then they move on to the next day and they can add in another bite-sized piece of information and, and just let it accumulate over time day by day to the end of the 40-day period. And by then, you know, it, it becomes a lifestyle. It, it, um habit you, you allow the habits to yes one themselves. day at a time if, if I told you all the the 40 principles that I talk about in the book you know all at once and dumped them on you you wouldn't know where to start so I really wanted a starting point and a step-by-step -step, um, way to go through um, changing your eating and changing your lifestyle I've, tr I've read a lot of nutrition books um, I, I do that a lot in my practice because I see people who are coming to me as a for a chiropractic the ones that heal the fastest, eat the best, smoke 
don't smoke, I mean, and um, live the healthiest overall. And what, what I think is interesting about this book is unlike those other dietary books, which are great, by breaking it down, it's just way less intimidating. It doesn't Go seem ahead. like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? Now, for me, this has reaffirmed a lot of what I already do. But at the same time, there's little things like, oh, she's calling me out on that. i got to quit eating before bed. <laughs> you know, those, those little things. And it's that one, like you said, digestible thing a day. And it, it, uh, it makes it just very not intimidating. I love the way you wrote it. Well, thank you. And, and I talk about the book kind of wrote itself. Um, I, I, talk, I would just sit down at the computer and my fingers would start moving and I don't, I feel like some of it came through me. Um, well, it, it, uh, it really is well written and I think the other thing about it is it's not just you have to eat this and you have to eat, not eat that. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot, of, there's things about exercise, rest, so it's really about health and wellness, not Absolutely. just about diet and, and they become yeah, I, I don't call I, I don't call it a diet because it really is a lifestyle. If you take on these lifestyle concepts, you will lose weight. But it, it really is a lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. You know, I walk the walk. Um, I think you had asked me in an email, um, how do I have time to teach yoga, write books? Um, I have kids. I run a business, and I, you know, I'm working on three other books right now. So how do, how do I do that? I walk the walk. I have the energy to do all this because I practice yoga and because I eat well. And I also meditate, which is also very powerful. And It's, it's amazing, isn't it, when... when um I'm first starting to get somebody to exercise. I'll tell them, just go for five minutes. Mm. Lower that barrier. Yeah. And once they lower that barrier, all of a sudden they go out for five, and they don't fail if they didn't go for a half an hour, so they get yeah. that reaffirmed. But once you go out for five, you stay for 10. Absolutely. For and um, it, it, uh, mm. it, it just snowballs itself. And I think that's one of the geniuses behind this book is that she chips. I, I think uh, really the, one of the best ways to use this is to do it and then do it again and do it again because you can't do it all. Absolutely. You know, I um, teach this as a class at my studio and I've had some um, members repeat this seven or eight times and they come back time after time and each time they go through it, they just take it to a deeper level. And each time they go through, maybe they set a different intention or something they really want to focus on. Um, but they, they keep coming back time after time. So That's it's exactly how Sue Rasek introduced it to me. She, you know, she's an instructor here at Plymouth Yoga and uh, is the one who introduced us and, and me to this book. And she was running a class here. Yes. And um, she's, she's told me in conversation that you know, she's on it her third time and each time she gets better. And the same with me, honestly. I do it with my classes. I read my own chapters, yeah. and um, I, I do the whole thing with them, and each time I go through it, even though I wrote the book and I know this stuff, it, it just takes it to a deeper level. That's excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. We come back, we're going to dive into the book a little bit and talk some specifics about nutrition. See you in a minute. We're talking back and we're talking lifting. And when you're, when you're lifting, so many times people lose the corrective posture in their spine. And this posture is really important to do a proper lift. You need this lumbar spine with a curve in it. When you lose that curve, it really gives, it increases your risk to damaging the low back. So when you do a proper lift, the first thing you want to do is you want to tighten your gut, you want to tighten your stomach muscles and once you engage that, the stomach muscles actually wrap around and touch, uh, attach to the back. And when they are on, you're going to lift much better. And as soon as they're engaged, you're more likely to lift properly, which comes from your buttocks and your thighs with your core being a stabilizer. But if you lose that curve and you bend like this, that's where the back gets injured. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Backwards. 
and we are with Elise Cantrell. Right now what we're going to do is dive into her book and talk some questions about the different chapters in here. <coughs> it's 40 days, so I chose to do it over Lent, um, I, I, it's, so I'm a little over halfway. So you take one day at a time, you don't read ahead, I love that idea, I love that idea. It's just very, very digestible as you said before. The one uh, place I'd like to start is actually day one. You talk about some food do's and food don'ts. Mm. So do you want to go over a couple of them? Yeah, the um, you know, I really try to keep it simple. I don't want to overwhelm, but the the main don'ts um, that I feel really strongly about is fast food, junk food, and processed food. Those are huge don'ts. High fructose corn syrup, um, um, Isn't that from corn? Isn't that healthy? <laughs> I could spend an hour talking to you about that. Um, corn, 89% of corn in the United States is genetically modified and highly sprayed with Roundup spray, which is a neurotoxin and a carcinogen. So um, my answer is no, <laughs> not the corn yeah, syrup. The, the, the food sources can be really tainted. And you really have to know where your food sources come from. And this is my passion in the book is I want to make people aware of what they're eating because people trust the food industry and have trusted the food industry to feed their families. And the food industry has, we have misplaced our trust. We are being fed preservatives, artificial colors, flavors, genetically modified ingredients. We're being fed ingredients that are sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides. And, you know, we, we're alarmed by the cancer rates and the rates of autism, Alzheimer's, ADD, ADHD, and a, a long list of other things in our country. And um, it, it is in the premise of Ayurveda that these are, tox these are diseases of toxins. They take a lot of energy out of your system. Absolutely. Um, you have something. Well, you, you talk a lot. And I'm jumping ahead of where I necessarily want to be, but it fits with what you're saying. You talk in this book about, uh, there's a term you use, prana. Yes. And I don't know if um, I'm pronouncing yes, it correctly. Yes, prana is that exactly right. Um, prana is um, the concept of life force energy, qi in Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. So prana and qi are one and the same. And um, food actually contains life force energy, real live food. Um, naturally grown food on vines and plants and trees contains life force. It's living. But foods that contain, um, that are dead, containing preservatives and artificial colors and flavors, fast foods, processed foods, um, things in boxes, bags, and cans, those are not living foods. They do not contain life force. So when we feel low on energy, it's because we're not feeding ourselves foods that contain energy. We're actually eating foods that drain our energy away to process them and digest them. It's interesting because, you know, when you look at just the materials that make a human being up. Yeah. Okay. If you, you sitting here talking to me live versus the minute after you die, those materials are exactly the same. Mm. That's the difference in that life force. You call yes. it what you want, spirit, whatnot. Sure. There is life force energy flowing through. And when we look, I brought some little samples. I love these that. These Twinkies. <laughs> which people call food. I've had these for samples for the, te the, the high schools I teach for over a year, and they haven't touched, they haven't been touched in their freshness, if you will. <laughs> but when you read some of those ingredients, enriched ble uh, bleached wheat flour, bleached, they're putting chlorine in your body. Um, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, sugar, cottonseed oil, uh, glycerin, diglyceride, xanthum, you know, you start to get into monocalcium, leavenings, uh, uh, all kinds of things, a bunch of hydrogenation in here, things that don't sound like they grew on a farm. Yes. Um, one of the things I like to tell my students, and I think I say it in the book, is um, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Yeah, if you I can read, read it, there. if you can read it, you know, and you understand what it is, that's one thing. But if it's 16 letters long, it's not made for human consumption. Yeah. And, and that's really true, right? I mean, this, this product, there's a, tell me the difference between nutrition and calories. 
You know that that's a great question because um, you can take two groups of people and feed one group all junk food and give them 1,500 calories a day. And a second group of people, you can feed them all whole natural foods and give them 1,500 calories a day. The group that's eating the junk food is going to gain weight, they're gonna lose energy, and they're gonna lose their health. Still the same number of calories, whereas the group that's eating the wholesome natural foods, those people are going to be losing weight, they're gonna be gaining energy, their skin's gonna look better, um, their eyes become clear, their nails get stronger and longer and, and brighter. Um, you, you will see a difference on every single level and their metabolism revs up. So the types of foods you eat actually affect the metabolism and how fast and how well you metabolize food. So when you eat an apple, it metabolizes different than one of these graham crackers. Absolutely. Right now, if, if you were to hold these two things, which one's heavier? The apple is heavier, way but heavier. One graham cracker has the same number of calories as the apple. And which one's going to fill you up? The apple. You know, you, somebody might go through the whole pack of graham crackers, which is much lighter than this apple, and they just consume nine have times the calories. Nine times the calories of this apple, and no prana, no life force. And no, yeah, the no apple, nutrition. The apple has the fiber, the vitamins, and and all all kinds of life force energy flowing through it. It's live. It came from a live tree. And the truth is, the apple, because it's so hard to get the calories out of there, takes calories to, to digest, digest it. Which absolutely. Which is why when you say it revs up your metabolism, that's a, yes. that that gets the engine burning. Absolutely. This, this actually, you know, would do the reverse. It um, turns straight to sugar. It goes straight into the bloodstream right and causes the body to release insulin, which is a fat storage hormone. And that's that's how you can eat. This is fat free. Mm -hmm. been promoted as healthy. That's why I bring graham crackers to this because people don't look at them like a healthy yes, object, yes. You know, a healthy snack overall. But this non-fat, pure sugar things that break down like this turn straight to fat. Straight to fat. And, that, and that's why I really try to emphasize um, eating whole foods rather than something that comes in, in packages in cans and boxes and bags. It's a pretty easy way to detect that it's not the right food if you just look and see if it comes from the produce aisle or if it comes from the junk food aisle. The package really is just for shipping, I think. I don't think it helps the freshness It doesn't, yeah. No, the, <laughs> There's it, no freshness it, in Those there. mold will not grow on them, bugs will not touch Twinkies, um, and there's no living form other than humans that will naturally want to feed on a, twin, a Twinkie. Yeah. It's a food product. It's not a food, it's like many food. many options. You know, many things on the shelves. Um, I brought a lemon. Ah, uh, talk about the lemon. Cause I love I've lemons. Been, I have been doing since this. Uh, since I started your book, I've been doing the hot lemon water. I, love I do the hot great. lemon water every single morning, like clockwork. I, even when I go on a vacation, I take with me one or two organic lemons so I can have my hot lemon water even on vacation. But when you start the day with hot lemon water, um, you just take a small piece of lemon. You're not using the whole lemon. So a little small wedge of lemon. And it needs to be organic because lemons are highly sprayed. And you will squeeze the lemon in some hot water in a mug and then drop the lemon peel and all into the mug. And lemons have so many amazing properties. I talk about it fully in the book. But yeah, you, um, do, you donate a couple pages to that. To, just lemon to water lemon and... water alone, the beneficial. But it, it does rev up the metabolism. It is a um, toxifier for the kidneys and the blood um, and the liver. It is also, it has some anti-carcinogen properties. It's a stimulant, natural stimulant, and um, many, many more things. You can read it in the book, but uh, many, many more great properties in the that, hot that's lemon so water. wonderful. You know, I've been using that in the morning. Now, it's interesting because you also talk about how cold drinks actually mm. um, slow down the metabolism, and that's interesting because you have to understand what what is your intestine but a long smooth muscle so if i'm warming up for a track meet i don't put ice on 
And, and, and that I found interesting because I, I was yes. always under the impression if I drink cold water, my body has to heat it up. That's going to stimulate my metabolism. The, but I'm so glad you asked this because that is like one of the things that really shocks my students is I can't put ice in my water. But it, it does. It, it is a smooth um, muscle and it hardens the intestine up when you put dump cold beverages in it and, and it slows down the metabolism. We consider in Ayurveda the metabolism is considered the digestive fire. And if you douse a fire with freezing cold ice water, fires really heat. We want to build your heat to improve your digestion. If you take cold and, and mash it down, then you're, you're damper, dampening the fire. And we want to keep a, a healthy immune system, healthy body, healthy metabolism is all based on a strong, healthy digestive fire. Yeah, that I, I love that part because it, it really makes a big difference. I, I've never... Um, do you have comments on coffee? Coffee, I drink coffee. I drink organic coffee. I try not to overdo it. Um, coffee, I talk in the book about the constitutions, vata, pitta, and kapha. And um, there's some of the constitutions um, benefit more than others from coffee. A kapha constitution, which um, they tend to be more sluggish in their metabolism and more sluggish in their energy. Coffee is actually really good for a kapha in moderation. So she's talking about constitutions. What Elise is speaking about is there are, and she goes through this wonderfully in here. In fact, I took the test in here. There's, there's a test on what constitution you are and and you can be one of three or a mix of two or a mix of three which is a little more rare you state um, but it's pretty interesting when it's a it's very revealing when you have to be honest with yourself like yeah that I think that's me or I'm a little of both of these and not so much of this one and you determine what you are right. and you sort of give uh, some recommendations on it's, foods that yeah. work for certain constitutions absolutely it's your mind body type <clears throat> And um, there's types of yoga practice that are appropriate for each mind-body type. Exer there's different types of exercise appro appropriate for different mind-body types and diet for mind-body types. So a constitution is just your mind-body type. We're all unique, we're all different, and we all have, um, a, you know, we different things work for different people in losing weight and in feeling better and feeling energy and metabolism and health and so the book goes into what type you are and how to optimize your diet for your constitution for mm -hmm. yeah. and what i think is interesting about it is it's a little bit at a time you give wonderful recipes i was going into this thinking man how am i going to shop for this it's going to be wacky diets on each page each every day it's not there's a a, a beautiful recipe on each uh on each day that you can or cannot do but i'll tell you it's a recipe book in itself and the the beauty is they're all things that you can buy right at the store absolutely and um there, there, there's desserts in here too. It's not like there's a purist where you can never have any fun or. Yeah, I diet. want to talk on that because I think that's real important. First of all, for for me, the whole thing has to be doable. It has to be simple enough to be able to follow. It can't. I, I'm a mom. I, I work, um, so it, ha it The recipes can't be complicated. And number two, they have to be healthy. But number three, they have to be good. They have to taste, taste good. good. And really making a lifestyle change isn't resolving, resigning yourself to live the rest of your life with boring food. And um, It actually tastes better. It tastes better. And, and I want to get you to eat food that tastes good. And I want you to enjoy it. And I want you to have fun. Um, and for me, I've had so much fun experimenting with recipes. and. Um, no, it is... Uh it is absolutely fabulous, and at this point, we're running out of time, so I have to say goodbye to Elise for now, but hopefully we can have her back because there's actually much more we need to talk about. This is a topic that we could go on and on for, but I really highly recommend this book. It is so wonderful, and until next time, we've got your back. Thank you.